Hello and welcome. My name is Keith Barker, and in this video, you and I get to take a look at the world of system message logging, or as his friends call it, syslog. And syslog is a fantastic tool to get information about what's going on on the system. And for this demonstration, I've got three devices here. I've got router one, router two, and a switch, and they are all on the 192.168.1 network space. And many of the events that happen on these devices will automatically generate a syslog message. But the question is, where do these messages go regarding links coming up or interfaces going down or protocols changing? Or are they kept? Well, by default, they're kept here on the router or the switch itself. And when we've seen that information over here at the CLI is to issue the command show logging. So let's focus our attention here on R1 and let's do a few examples. So here on R1, we'll do a show logging, press enter. And these are the defaults currently in place here on R1. And it says we're doing logging syslog messages to the console. So if somebody's connected on line console zero, they're gonna see those messages. And effectively at debugging, they're gonna see every possible syslog message that is generated if they're sitting at the console. If somebody is remotely connected with SSH or Telnet and they've enabled syslog messages to be seen at their terminal, they are also gonna see all possible syslog messages as well from their VTY session. And last but not least, buffer logging refers to saving the information locally in RAM on this router. And also by default, we're doing it at a level of debugging. So somebody at the console, somebody who's VTY'd in and enabling that feature and the router itself in memory is going to be seeing all the possible syslog messages that are being generated by router one. So let's verify a few things. Let's first of all verify the console. So currently if we do a show users, this is gonna show us that we're currently connected that little asterisk means we're connected on line console zero. So we should be seeing logging messages here if there are any logging messages. So if we do something like config T and then we type in end, that should generate a syslog message. And we can include more detail about what's included in a syslog message. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But what's shown right here is the facility level. And a facility could be a hardware device, a protocol, a module, etc. And it's there to give an indication of the source or the cause of the system message. This next number is the severity. And the severity levels are zero all the way through seven. And then it's followed by a mnemonic right here in uppercase to kind of give us a clue regarding what happened. And then following it, we have a description. Also, not planned, but it's here. Here's another syslog message. So this one is a level six. And the PNP stands for plug and play. So this is indicating that behind the scenes, this discovery stopped. So that's the mnemonic here highlighted. And then this is the description. And the reason we're seeing these messages is because we're currently online console zero and it's currently configured to do logging to the console at anything at level debugging or numerically lower. In fact, let's talk about that for a moment. And here are these severity levels. Now I put these in numeric order from the highest number down to the lowest number. Well, so when I think of level seven as the priority debugging, think of that like seeing everything. So that means if you and I are sitting at the console and the consoles we looked at a moment ago is set to a level of debugging, effectively that means we're gonna see every possible detail regarding syslog messages that are gonna be sent to our console. So that level of debugging was currently set for the logging to the console, the logging to terminals who have it enabled, and also to the buffer, to memory on this local router. And so when you set a level, for example, of debugging, which is level seven, it includes everything from that point down as well. So you're gonna get informational, notifications, warnings, errors, criticals, alerts, and emergencies. However, we don't have to send every possible syslog message at level seven and below to a destination. If we wanted to, we could specify that we wanna include everything regarding notifications level five, and then that would include everything at level five and below. And that's why I've ordered these in this fashion from seven all the way down to zero, just to remind us that if we select level five, which is notifications, we're gonna get messages at that level and below. So if we specify debugging, we're gonna get everything at level seven and below. And to help remember the actual names for each of the numbers, I've come up with a little saying that may help you in remembering the correct order for these. So if you remember the order, you can then start at seven, just count down, and you'll also remember the actual numbers and severity levels associated with them. And here it is. I'd like you to imagine some dogs that are playing in nice water. So just think about it in your mind or visualize or imagine dogs that are playing in nice water. So dogs in nice water. That's pretty easy so far. So dogs in nice water and those dogs in nice water, what they're doing is they're eating and they're eating something pretty interesting. They're eating cookies and eggs because many dogs will eat almost anything. But in this case, these dogs in nice water, they're eating cookies and eggs. So if you take them two parts, part one and part two, those dogs in nice water eating cookies and eggs, they can help us remember the correct order and the severity levels for these syslog messages. And here's the piece by piece, dogs in nice water. And that's the first half. And those dogs in nice water are eating cookies and eggs. 
just like that. And there are default syslog messages associated with various different activities. And the more you work with the CLI and practice with it and you see syslog messages, you're going to remember more and more what levels those are associated with. For example, here on this router, if we went to config T and then we typed in end, here comes our syslog message. It's a severity level five, which could also be called the notification level for syslog messages. If we created a new interface, let's take a peek at what interfaces we have with the show IP interface brief. And let me create a new loopback interface. We'll go into configuration mode, interface, loopback zero, and we'll do an IP address, 1111. We'll give that a 32-bit mask. Check it out. Once again, we have a syslog message. So this is a level five, which once again is a notification level. And this is where we're getting the line protocol. So the line protocol came up on loopback zero. And so we'll go ahead and finish off with the IP address. We'll exit. And now we have a syslog message, severity level five, which indicates we just exited configuration mode. So if we went back into configuration mode and we went to interface loopback zero, and we said shutdown, that also should generate a syslog message. And there it is. So also at the notification level five for the interface. And then we have another syslog message regarding the line protocol on that interface going down. And if we do a show logging, press enter, the reason that we're seeing those messages is because we're on the console and it's set to level debugging, which is level seven, which includes seeing any messages at level six and five and four and all the way down. So if we wanted to change that behavior, we could. We could go into configuration mode and say logging, spelled correctly, console. And then instead of using the default of seven, we could choose one of these severity levels. So you can specify the actual number or the actual name, either way is great. So let's go ahead and specify a severity level of three, which is errors. And you'll notice when we change that, we're not getting a syslog message. <laughs> and that's because those syslog messages are gonna be at level five. So if we change it to logging console at level four or below, still no syslog messages, but if we go to five and press enter, that includes the notification level, which is what that syslog message is gonna be at. So now we're seeing it. And if we do a do show logging, we can verify our current settings. So we set to level five, which is notifications, and all we're seeing is level five and below from the console. However, buffer logging, which is still at debugging, it has all those messages. So if we do a do show logging and press enter and hit spacebar a few times, all those messages are here, including changing the logging level to level three and changing it to level four and changing it finally to level five which is where we left it. But that's all in the buffer because we're logging to the buffer at level seven. And again, to confirm that, we'll just do a do show logging. We could also turn logging to the console off. So if we wanted to disable logging to the console, we could do a no logging console, hit the up arrow key a couple times, do show logging. And now it's showing that logging to the console is disabled. So let me go ahead and enable it with logging console. And I'm gonna set it back to a uh, debugging level so that we'll see everything. We'll verify our work real quick with a do show logging. And sure enough, we're back at debugging and below. So we can set the logging to any of these destinations at the level that we want to. Also, if we want to clear the logs from the memory, from the buffer, we can do a clear logging, confirm, and then we've just cleared the logging buffer. So if we do a show logging now, here's giving us the details of how it's set, but also what would follow normally is the buffer showing the existing logs that fit in the memory space for the buffer. So currently it's set to 8192, and then it's a first in, first out once that buffer memory space is completely used. We could also configure that and set up more buffer space if we need to. But buffer, once again, is referring to the memory space on the local router that's just temporarily holding that log information. All right, so we've demonstrated logging console. We've taken a look at logging buffer. What about monitor logging? This is referring to people who are remotely connected in. So let's do this. Let's find out what the IP address is here. Let's do a show IP interface brief. So this guy's at 22. Let's go over to router two and let's tell it over. So we'll tell it over to 192.168.1.22, press enter, and we are in. So let's do a show logging. So currently console, buffer, and monitor logging is all set to debugging, but check this out. If we go into configuration mode and end, I'm not seeing log messages. <laughs> but if we do a show log, there's a syslog message in the buffer, but why am I not seeing it? And the answer is, if we're remotely connected in, we have to opt in to see those messages. This is one of the critical mistakes I ha that have been made in the past. And that is, somebody will turn on debugging or something else that's pretty significant, but they're remotely connected, they're not seeing the messages, so they're not realizing they just left a whole bunch of logging that's happening to the console and they're not seeing it. So to enable seeing these locally on our terminal session, we type in the command terminal monitor, just like that. And if we want to turn it off, we do a terminal no monitor. And this is on iOS. It's slightly different on XRs and XEs, but that's the basic gist of it. So let's go ahead and turn it back on. And now let's go into configuration mode and we'll type in end. 
And now, because we have terminal monitor on, we're going to see the syslog messages. And if we type in who, which is the same as show users, this is just to confirm that we're remotely connected at the moment on VTY line zero, and we're coming in via telnet. But it'd be the same logic if we were connecting in via SSH, as far as terminal monitor or terminal no monitor. Now, the next challenge I'd like to address, and let me go ahead and exit out here, and let's go right back to the console on R1. The next thing I'd like to address is why is my syslog message looking slightly different than what a normal syslog message would look like? And as a trainer, uh, what I often do is I turn off timestamps <laughs> intentionally just to give more real estate in the screen when I'm teaching. So there's a command I have in my configuration, and that is this guy right here. No service timestamps for log. I also do the same thing for debug. And effectively what that's doing is it's removing timestamps from my syslog messages. So let me go ahead and undo that. We'll type in service, timestamps, and then we can specify what we want to include. And let's go ahead and include the date time. And also let's include the local time and the milliseconds. And then we could also include the year if we wanted to. Press enter. And now if we type in, in check out this syslog message. <laughs> now it's including the details that I asked it to, including the milliseconds and the date. But I left off the year and that could have been included as well. So following this timestamp, we then have the facility it came from and then the severity level, and then the mnemonic, and then the description. But wait, there's more. We can also add a sequence number if we want to. And that's done with the command service, sequence numbers. And now if we look at our syslog messages, we also have a sequence number as well, as along with the date that we just enabled a few moments ago. Now, one of the challenges is that if we have this router and the router over here, router two, and the switch, and uh, like 100 other devices that are all generating log messages, it'd be awesome if we had some way of centrally, you know, managing and looking at those. And one option for doing exactly that is to send them over to a server or a service that is collecting that log information. And that's affectionately known as a syslog server. And the default port for syslog services are UDP and port number 514. Although we could have a syslog server that's using a different port and we just want to configure our devices as they're sending to that syslog server to use the appropriate port associated with that syslog server. And it just so happens that I have a syslog server on my network at dot 18 on the same network that these devices are connected to. So if we wanted to configure our devices that in addition to buffer and terminal and console, if we wanted to also send messages over to a syslog server, that's easy to do. And let's do that right here. So let's start off with a show logging just to verify where we're at. So currently we're logging to the console at level seven and below. We're also enabling logging for VTY sessions coming in if they do the terminal monitor option at level seven and below. And we're also logging to the buffer currently at level seven and below. And again, those levels are right here. So if we wanted to also log to a syslog server, we just go into configuration mode and say logging host, and then specify the IP address or host name if you have DNS resolution set up for the syslog server. So I have a little syslog server from Nagios that I just booted up last night, and it's at 192.168.1.18. Now, by default, it'd be using UDP port 514. However, if we have a server that's using a slightly different port, we can just train the router what port that is. And that's the case here with my Nagio server, which happens to be using UDP port 5544. So we'll add the keyword transport, we'll use a question mark, we'll specify when I use UDP, a space and a question mark, and then we'll specify port, the keyword port, and a question mark, and we're going to use 5544, only because my syslog server at that IP address is supporting that port. So we'll go ahead and press enter. So I've got a new syslog message, which is severity six. So I'm currently at the console. And so I'm receiving level seven and below. So this is a severity level six. There's the mnemonic indicating that logging host just started up and there's a description following it. So now if we do a do show logging, check this out. So now in addition to our console monitor and buffer logging, if we hit space once more, it's now doing logging to this bad boy right here at 192.168.118 using this port and check it out it's also sending by default at level informational and below. So if we scroll up, we can remind ourselves what level that is. So informational is right here. So effectively that syslog server is gonna get everything at a level six and lower. However, if we wanted to modify that and actually send more than just level six and below, we could do a logging, the keyword trap, a question mark, and then specify the level or the name of that level that we want to include. So if we wanted to send debugging and below, we could hit seven or type in debugging Either way is great, that's all there is to it. So now if we do a show logging and press enter and then go down just a little bit further. Now we're logging at level seven. We're logging to this IP address on this port. And currently we've sent 47 log messages over to that device. Also for fun, let's do one more thing. I'm gonna remotely connect over to R1 again and do terminal, no monitor. 
and let's do a debug of IP packet. Now in a production environment, this is there's no filters on this, there's no conditions. It's just debug IP packet. And one might be thinking, well, I, I did the debug, nothing's happening. I guess, uh, I don't know, they go to lunch or whatever. In the background, R1 is just going crazy. Check it out. It's doing uh, logging to all of its configured destination sources, including the buffer, anybody who's on the console, and to the syslog server, and this is a situation in a busy network where you may never get that console back. So that's, that's why I remotely went in to do it. So if I turned on terminal monitor here, I'd be in the same situation. So I'm going to go ahead and do an unall for undebug all. Let's just stop the debugs from happening. But check this out. Over in R1, it may take a while for the console to catch up. In fact, that could be a long while. And over at our syslog server, all that's being logged as well. So if we go back and verify that by doing a show log, which is short for show logging. Yeah, look at this. Trap level logging, level debugging, 15,997 message lines logged, all going to that device at dot 18. So to finish this up, let's go take a look at that log server and take a look at the traffic. And here it is. Let me make that a little bit bigger. And let's go to home and just do a refresh here. <laughs> See that curve? Uh, so we have four active devices that are generating traffic, and we can go take a look at those by clicking here on report. And it says, look at this guy, 192.168.1.22, 22,000 log counts on that guy and climbing. So if we look at the details for that and scroll down. So this is going to match up with what's on the local logs over on router one. This is the debug from the debug IP packet that we started. So in this video, we've had an opportunity to take a closer look at logging, syslogging on a Cisco device. And when we remember the phrase, dogs in nice water, what are they eating? <laughs> They're eating cookies and eggs. That can help us in remembering both the order and also the different levels regarding syslog. So thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you, my friend, in the next video or live event soon. Until then, be well. you're putting in all your hopes and efforts are all in vain